Last summer, Rachel and I attended a meeting in Edinburgh with the Scottish Government's digital strategy team. They wanted to learn more about High's approach to community development and rural regeneration in particular. Within an hour of arriving, we were heading back to Waverley Station. Um, the parting words to us was, come back to us with some thoughts as to what a rural community broadband programme might look like. By the time we reached Bitlockery, Community Broadband Scotland was starting to take shape. A lot of work has been done between then and now, and today feels like a real milestone for us, having all six pioneer communities with us in the room. It's a really good feeling. I've spent the last 10 years working as a development officer, supporting rural communities to lead their own development, mainly through the ownership of um, income generating assets um, along the sort of community buyout um, lines. And during those 10 years, being out in the field, uh, jobs and housing is constantly what we've heard time and time again, loud and clear from all the communities we're working with. Today, things have changed. Today, it's now broadband jobs and housing. And that's why I'm so delighted to be here today and to be part of Community Broadband Scotland going forward. As, as Rachel's mentioned, if there's a single thing that we can do to transform the, the, the futures of, of our communities in rural Scotland, it's digital connectivity. And clearly we don't have to convince anyone in the room here today of that. Uh, Robbie's last slide uh, mentioned two words um, in terms of what we're looking for in our communities that we're going to be sort of partnering with, with Community Broadband Scotland. And those were enthusiasm and innovation. And this isn't very, very true. If there's one lesson I've learnt in my time working with HAI, um, along with rural communities, that is do not underestimate what rural communities can achieve. If you create the right environment, a community can deliver results that are nothing short of transformational. So, so what's Community Broadband Scotland all about? Um, tomorrow, my colleague Alistair Nicholson, which I'm guessing most of you will know, uh, will provide more detail for this afternoon, I'm going to give a bit of a, sort of a higher level overview and to share with you our thoughts on what creating this right environment might look like. When you think of broadband, you tend to think about kit, you know, things like sort of fibre and antennae and, and mass and whatever else. And I hope I'm not losing any technical folk in terms of my description there. Clearly, the correct hardware, the, the plumbing um, that's involved in this is absolutely critical to any successful community broadband project. But for the moment, can I ask you to take a, a step back and, and look at the bigger picture, the environment that all of this sits within? And I'm just going to outline the sort of key sort of points of the proposal that we gave to the um, Scottish Government when we were actually trying to shape what Community Broadband Scotland might look like. And that kind of centred for us on, on three things. And those three things are, one, community-led, two, partnership working, and a third, sustainability. In, in terms of community-led, there's a whole host of um, you know, very strong examples of what communities are doing uh, where they're demonstrating real strong leadership and, and commitment uh, in terms of doing things for themselves. And indeed, in the room today, there's um, lots of you who are doing just this. So, so why is this? Why are communities having to step up? Um, in my view, there's perhaps two reasons for this. First one is that nobody else is going to do it. And the second one is that it works. It definitely does work. Um, as Robbie mentioned in his presentation, whilst a step change programme will reach the majority, it's not going to reach all um, parts of, of rural Scotland. For rural communities in the harder to reach area, market failure is not something that's unknown to us. Indeed, communities are stepping in to run the local shop, to create housing opportunities, uh, to provide a local taxi service. Where the market won't reach, communities will tend to step in to plug the gap. And that's very much what we're looking to emulate with our approach to Community Broadband Scotland. Within High, we've long been of the view that we don't do things to communities. Instead, we work with communities to help them do things for themselves. So that's a key sort of ethos that we've built into Community Broadband Scotland, that we're here to support the work that you guys will be doing on the ground to deliver your own aspirations in terms of better digital connectivity. The second sort of cornerstone principle is partnership working. Community Broadband Scotland can't work in isolation, but it certainly can't be anywhere as effective as we want it to be if it chooses to work in isolation. We need to be fully aligned with the Step Change programme, which is being delivered by Highlands Niles Enterprise and also Scottish Enterprise, and also working very closely with all the local authorities throughout Scotland who are key partners in the next generation broadband rollout. Recognising this need to be fully aligned and joined up at a strategic level, part of the CBS structure is that we've actually got a project team 
which is representative of some of the sort of key agencies and government departments that are critical in, in the um, community broadband, not the community broadband, the next gen rollout. And their partners here include Scottish Enterprise, um, Scottish Government, Highlands, Highlands Enterprise, COSLA, both national parks, Cairngorms and Loch Lomond and Trossach National Parks, and also <coughs> Carnegie UK Trust. Uh, Carnegie have done a lot of research and have got a great interest in rural connectivity. Partnership working happens at a local level too, and a part of our role will be to support you to develop local networks with your key agencies and also with existing networks um, that are happening organically at, at a local level. We're very keen to support collaborative working and, and where feasible, um, bringing communities together to try and help work together to, to find the solutions to the, to the projects that you're delivering. Networking and, and sharing from each other is a key part of this. Mm -hmm. So Community Broadband Scotland will therefore be collaborating at all levels to ensure that projects are fully aligned with the Step Change programme and to bring added value from the various partners out there to, to, to local projects. The phrase stronger together comes to mind, but I'm clearly not talking in a constitutional uh, framework there. The third cornerstone is sustainability. This is absolutely critical to any successful project going forward. Communities have to be enabled and, and to be empowered to deliver projects that are unfettered by a, a, a reliance on ongoing revenue funding. So we're looking for projects to be able to stand on their own two feet and to be community businesses. And part of the Community Broadband Scotland offer will to be support you um, in developing business plans and developing the right governance models to enable the project to go forward um, on its own two feet in the longer term. So, so just moving on and, and looking at so what will CBS actually look like, and Alistair will give more detail on this tomorrow, but just very briefly, we're currently a team of seven, soon to be eight. We've got four community broadband advisors, soon to be five, who are going to be located strategically throughout um, all corners of Scotland. And these advisors will be the, the sort of key conduit for us in terms of delivering support at a local level. The projects that we work with will have to fit within a number of eligibility criteria kind of tied in with what the current broadband rollout speeds are at the moment and, and how they might be placed in terms of the next gen rollout. As well as giving advice and guidance um, through CB, our Community Broadband Scotland <coughs> staff, there'll also be um, start-up funding available. And this will help with costs to plan and develop projects, including help with capital equipment costs. Now, we're very keen to learn from the experiences of our pioneer projects and also the existing community projects that, that are, have been there, done it, and are continuing to do it. And we're looking to um, the pioneers and existing projects to help us shape what CBS will look like going forward. We've got parameters that we have to work within, but we're very, very keen to, within those parameters, to make our funding offer and our support offer as responsive as it can be to the needs of the communities and to make access to funding as simple as possible. We're delighted that our, our four um, established projects have joined us for the seminar and we're really looking forward to learning from their experiences and building that into the work of Community Broadband Scotland going forward. And as I mentioned, Alistair will give a bit more detail tomorrow on what this will actually look like. So, so the road ahead is, is not without its challenges. Access to affordable backhaul and more detailed um, information as to the extent of the step change programme are key considerations for us going forward. And whilst none of this um, is going to be completely easy, it doesn't mean that we can't do things now. We can sit back and wait for clarity about the Step Change programme, or we can do something now to start building the solutions. And that's very much where we are. In an era where digital communication and uh, expectations are rising exponentially, and where every 60 seconds there's 98,000 tweets, 169 emails are sent, we certainly can't sit back and wait for others to take action. We need to be on the front foot and we need to be able to try and do our best to match the digital aspirations of our rural communities. I'll just finish with a conversation that I had with a colleague of mine quite recently. Uh, this is a colleague of mine who lives in the sky at the end of an eight mile single track road. And he was telling me that he's found the solution to his broadband challenges. What's that? I was asking him with eager anticipation. His answer was to move house. 
clearly, I think we can do better than that. And working together and working with our partners and, and with the commitment that we're getting from Scottish Government, I'm confident that we can actually take this on into the, the next step for us and actually delivering projects on the ground that will make a transformational impact in our rural communities, which is fundamentally what it's all about. Thank you. Now, we're actually doing okay for time for the moment, so I'm actually going to open things up to questions for either um, Rachel, Robbie or myself. Anne Jeffries, um, Bagel, or the Elven Foot Project, as you also know there. Um, I guess possibly Robbie, maybe some others as well. Um, you were talking about, obviously about the, the overall broadband view for Scotland as a whole. Um, at the moment, we're, you know, maybe one meg if we're lucky, rural, um, trying to catch up with maybe 50, 100 megs in the cities. Obviously, as we come up to speed and get our projects going, um, the cities are moving on as well. Is your view to get everybody equal within Scotland, wherever you live, or is there an acceptance there'll always be a slightly second-class broadband, if you like, for people <coughs> further out? No, no, not at all. I mean, the, the concept of having a sort of two-speed sort of second-class, you know, real remote communities um, is not what we're looking for. I mean, it may take longer is the reality in sort of uh, rural rural areas just due to the economics of rolling out fibre but ultimately that's where we want to get to um, I mean, we've obviously commissioned uh, some research into various kind of what the countries that are kind of world leading digital nations at the moment um, and I mean the common denominator that you know that really is the, you know contributing to the USP is fibre so that that's where we want to get to and that's that's the kind of aspiration as I say there may well be different kind of financial models in cities, you know, to roll out fibre to the home is probably more attractive in cities than it is in rural areas, a lot less costly. It could well be that government may not need to intervene or we intervene in a slightly different way through financial models, financial instruments that we actually invest alongside rather than subsidising. It could well be that that element of subsidy needs to remain potentially in some rural communities. So we'll, we will get there and there's absolutely no um, intention that we'll have a, a sort of two-speed system, as I say, fibre is ultimately where we where it's at and where we want to get to in terms of right across Scotland. That's great, thank you. Hi, um, Fergus Mackay, Park Widow Broadband. Um, the only people in the UK currently getting one gigabit speeds to the home are rural communities. Nobody in the cities are getting that yet, and that's through GigaClear <laughs> and their innovative way of doing fibre, and they do it cheaper than you can do it in the city. Absolutely, and I, th I think that's the thing. I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's not an aspiration, it's a reality. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing. It goes back to, to Rachel's point, uh, to Sandra's point, um, when she was talking about within communities you'll, you'll tend to find real innovation, and I think that's absolutely true. We've seen that with the Barn Project. Obviously, um, Amanda, the Bagel Project at Elvin Foot has got aspirations around um, fibering up. There are big challenges in terms of that, and there are big challenges in terms of how you construct a business model that's, that's deliverable, because... There are, even though it's, it can be delivered as you were saying. Um, you know, some projects manage to find a way through it. It's still, uh, you know, this this is a commercial entity doing it. Right. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's commercial. And there's possible. still, yeah. I mean, I guess it's still that way that there's big numbers involved in the, the capital rollout, and I guess it's about getting your subscribe. Hundred and thirty thousand per village. Right, okay. Um, well, it's definitely that's a <laughs> very interesting financial model, and it would be good to to look through that in a bit more detail. Time for one more question. Hello, Alison Little for the Use Valley Broadband. We're in the early stages of our project just now. Um, we've just had the engineers in the valley in Easter. Uh, the, the back hall was going to be accessed for the local school, um, where a fibre optic runs into the school. Um, but I was shocked to find out they're not going to tap into that fibre optic, they're going to tap into the copper cables but they reckon the speed, it, it's not a strong enough connection there. Um, so they're going to have to go down to where the local exchange is in the town to tap in there. But why are they not tapping into the fibre optic when it already is there? I think it's some sort of rules and regulations. Well, I know that, I know that um, Clive will be here tomorrow, has been down, um, and we've had discussions with the Dumfries and Galloway and with Education Scotland. There's no kind of impediment in terms of the rules around access to schools. In fact, Dumfries and Galloway Council were really welcoming and were really up for kind of using the school as the base for some equipment or, if possible, for, for accessing the fibre there. I think the issue right. is more it's a capacity question in terms of Youth Valley. Right, now, I'll, okay. I'll defer to, to Clive when he arrives right, tomorrow because okay. he knows we'll the detail, yeah. but it's more just a kind of pragmatic solution to kind of get the, 
the connectivity and the bundled ADSL lines from closer to the exchange, really, which right, is where okay. this it's it's almost a kind of compromise in the in the meantime. But I mean, the the general point is that where there's where there's five going into schools, absolutely that happen, should yeah. that should deliver for the the community surrounding and. That's kind of one of the kind of key issues that's bound up in the other kind of big digital procurement at the moment, the, the SWAN project, which is about right. the public sector buying digital services and IT services. Um, so one of the things that we are really keen to, and the procurement's ongoing at the moment, one of the things that we have managed to get built into that procurement is a kind of community benefit aspect, which is very much about ensuring that access to the wider community through, through that fibre is, is, is built into the service that's provided through that contract. So. I think um, the general principle of schools being a sort of focal point mm -hmm. um, within communities for, for kind of wider connectivities is definitely, right. definitely embedded and yeah. understood and accepted. Good. Thank you.